Hey Windowers, and welcome to another episode of Windows on Windows, part of the series on the development of Windows Vista. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at Windows Codename Longhorn Build 4074, a Milestone 7 Alpha build from April 2004. This is probably the most famous Longhorn build, and was compiled only four months before Longhorn development was completely aborted and started again from scratch. So, if you're ready to see new visual styles, new icons, and full working aero glass transparency, as well as a lot more, let's start. So here we are in Longhorn build 4074 and in the first part of this episode we'll be taking a look at the new and changed features from previous builds. In the second part of this episode we'll be taking a look at the Aeroglass transparency and the desktop composition engine. You can click this link now if you want to go straight to the second part of the video. Otherwise let's log in. So when you first log in to build 4074 this is what you see. As you can see we've still got the slate theme by default at this point. We do have a new desktop wallpaper, this wallpaper is known as Leaves. In this build of Longhorn we do actually get a new theme although it's not turned on by default, this is called Jade. So let's activate it now. Incidentally with the Jade theme we got the Sego UI font, that's when that was introduced. The Jade theme by the way was also present by build 4066 so it's not actually introduced in this build of Longhorn although it is there by this point. Let's have a look at the start menu. So start menu now is different and it looks a lot like the start menu that ended up in the final version of Windows Vista so this is the Jade theme start menu. In the start menu we have some new functionality for shutdown options so we have this little drop down arrow here next to shutdown and we can choose from the different options a lot like the way you can in Vista and we also have this checkbox to let the system recommend what it thinks the best turn off option is and you can either turn that on or off yourself. Also in this build we have lots of new icons so hopefully you've noticed a new recycle bin icon on the desktop which looks like the Vista icon. We do have new icons for other programs as well, or other locations as well. So we have a new paint icon, for example, a new calculator icon, and a new notepad icon. Let's have a look at an explorer window. So this is computer. Notice the Jade theme looks very, very similar to the Windows Vista basic theme, or the theme that you get if Aero is not compatible with your hardware, for example. Look at this new notification down here, I talked about this in the video for build 4051, this is the notification in action. Notice there's a little orange progress bar on the right hand side, this is a timeout progress bar so when it gets to the bottom the notification will automatically disappear. Notice that when I have my cursor on the notification it doesn't go away, so that progress bar is now paused. If I take the mouse away you'll see it go down again. And there you go, that notification is now timed out. In the sidebar you can get back to the notifications by clicking on these, so you can kind of scroll through your previous notifications there. They all pop up at the bottom. So back to the explore window. Now there are lots of differences in the explore windows in this build. Firstly you may have noticed that the task pane at the top now is a lot smaller than it was previously, it's a lot narrower. There are also by this point no legacy toolbar icons and what I mean by that is at the top here there's no XP style toolbar anymore with the legacy icons in it like search for example. That's now completely disappeared. Let's go into pictures. Notice how the task pane changes colour when you go to different shell locations. So pictures is purple, documents is blue. Now have a look at the quick links at the top here. For a lot like the Vista and 7 quick links now, there are a lot fewer of them. If you think back to the video on build 4051, there were lots and lots of quick links that you could pick from, but now we have a much more conservative selection. If you click on an icon or on a file, you get some different quick links. So these are some of the ones you get for pictures. You can edit, for example. There you go. Incidentally, this icon allows you to turn the quick links on and off. So if you turn them off, this becomes a sort of preview pane and you can also resize it yourself like that. Personally, I find that a little bit redundant because if you remember, if you hover on pictures, you get a nice big preview anyway. Now, have a look at the bottom left here. We have this new view slider. 
Now this view slider actually combines some legacy functionality with some newer functionality and what I mean by that is that instead of whereas previously the view slider only controlled the size of the icons, this now also controls the view style of the icons. So if I click it for example, I can then scroll through and I get details for example or list view. If I go back to computer, this is a little bit easier to show you, so let's just click through it now. So large icons, medium icons, list view, there's also tiles as well, that should activate the tiles option, let's try opening it again. So there you go, if you drag it through, it shows you all the different styles. Notice for example with tiles, it's not just one icon size anymore, it has like a, a little section of the slider and it switches to tiles with small icons and then if you keep dragging they get a little bit bigger until eventually it changes to the next view style, which is quite nice. If you right click on the top window border in build 4074 you get some new toolbar resizing options so you can turn on and off various elements of the toolbars and the explorer windows here like the favorites button for example. You can also change the size so if you want to you can have your explorer windows looking like this so it's very very customizable. Now, another new feature in this build is if we go to the help and support center, we now have a new design, which is based on the color green. It fits in very nicely with the new leaves wallpaper. So here's the green design, and we also now have some actual help content as well. We can actually go through here and have a look at some content. There you go. Some of the pictures need to be done. Notice what happened then, by the way, when I maximised this explorer window. If you didn't notice, have a look at this. I'll just restore it again. The colour changes. If you maximise an explorer window, it becomes black rather than blue. And I'll talk about this a little bit more later on when I look at Aero as well, because it becomes a little bit more obvious why it does that when you have the DCE enabled. So I'll talk about that again later on. Now let's move on to the sidebar. So sidebar in this build, there are a lot more tiles now once again compared to build 4051 which only had maybe 4 or 5 I think it was. We've now got a lot more tiles to choose from. So here they are. That's just a few of them. An interesting feature of the sidebar in this build is that the clock is now locked to the bottom right hand corner and you can no longer drag it or move it around like you could previously. It's now stuck down here. However, it does have some new functionality, so we now have this alarm functionality, for example, if you go into properties and you can set yourself an alarm and choose what sound that you want to play, including Symphony No. 9 by Beethoven, which is quite nice, nice touch, you can put your own message in there. We can also now choose some different ways of displaying the clock, so you can have this one with a calendar, for example, which I quite like. You can have it um, a little bit more like it was in XP, where it's just got the time, so that's what that looks like. I'm going to put it on the calendar one because I quite like that. Also, if you go to sidebar properties in this build, this is now a little bit different. So previously we had two tabs, one was called sidebar and taskbar, like this one, and one was called positions, where you could customise the positions of the sidebar and taskbar, but now that functionality has its own little section in this tab. So all of the customization options for the taskbar and sidebar are now in the same place, which is really nice. So let's just have a quick look at some of the other visual styles in this build and what they look like with the sidebar enabled and disabled. So at the moment I've got it set on the Jade theme and what happens is if you have the sidebar enabled then the sidebar and taskbar retain the slate theme and it makes no difference what other theme you set. So just to show you, if I set it to XP Luna for example, so here's the start menu and it's got the Luna theme as have the windows, but like I said the sidebar and the taskbar retain the slate theme. However, if you turn the sidebar off from this option, what will happen is you'll get the traditional version of the taskbar back. So with the traditional clock, notification area, etc. like you have in XP. So I'll just show you Classic for example. So this is what Windows Classic looks like in Longhorn build 4074. Let's have a look at Jade now. And by doing this, we'll actually be able to see the Jade taskbar, which you can't really see when the sidebar is turned on. So this is the Jade taskbar and start menu. 
and let's put the sidebar back on. Notice how the properties box has changed now as well. Now, a few other random things in this build. This one I find quite interesting. If you go to properties for computer, and you go to where you'd expect to find device manager, what's actually happened now is device manager has been replaced with this hardware and devices link, which takes you to the Windows 7 style hardware and devices box. So the device manager is actually no longer attached to the user interface. Now just to finish off, there are various other very small differences in this build. First one is if you go to control panel, and this is also present in build 4051, you get this new task scheduler option. And it looks like this. And it gives you the option basically to create a task that you can schedule. So you have to give it a name, description, and then you can choose what's going to happen. So it could be that you want to run a program or you want to send an email. But these functions tell you that they're not implemented yet, so you can't actually use them. So that's that. Also, if you right click on the notification history tile, which is basically your taskbar notification tile, you've got this option go to rules and alerts. If you click it, you get to this dialog box and from here you can create what are called rules for your notifications. So if I just click on this, which doesn't seem to be working now, but it was earlier. Um, so create a new rule. So you've got lots of options here. So for example, when receiving an alert from a classic tray notification from I can't click on that now either. That's that's really odd. A lot of things just suddenly stop working. Um, but basically, you can you can get the system to perform an action depending on what sort of notification you've got. That's basically what this does. Yeah, this is quite quite buggy really. So you've got a few different options for this, and you can really customize how you want it to work. Now, last thing, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some screenshots of these features. Um, one of them is when you install a driver that's not been signed for compatibility with this build, which is obviously every third party driver at this point, um, you get a new driver installed compatibility sort of warning box and it, it kind of leads you to believe that the driver will not be able to be installed, although if you just cancel out of the box the driver is installed anyway, but it's just a new warning that you get. Also, if an app crashes or becomes non-responsive, you get some new style unresponsive app and error reporting dialog boxes in this build as well. Otherwise, those are all the features I've managed to find in this build that have changed since the previous ones. If you've used this build yourself, if you're planning on doing so, by all means feel free to have a dig around, maybe in a bit more detail than I have. If you find any other features or interesting things that you'd like to share with us, let me know in the comments below and I'll include anything relevant in annotations which I'll add to the video later on. Otherwise, that's the end of this part of the episode on Longhorn Build 4074. If you enjoyed this episode of Windows on Windows, new episodes are arriving approximately every two weeks. You can subscribe to be sure you're notified when each new episode is available. Before you go, don't forget to check out part two of this episode, which shows the Aeroglass transparency and the desktop composition engine working in this build, and I will see you there.